Hello everybody, uh, it's Dude here. I wanted to start a small video series um, kind of branching into the intros of becoming a 3D artist. And by doing that, um, I figured instead of just jumping right in and getting into like all the fun stuff of making the art and making the, uh, the rigs and the models and going in through the process of actually animating something, unfortunately I feel that a lot of the things that get glossed over that are sort of boring, not too boring, but I feel that it should be conceptualized at the get-go. And what I mean is that I feel that most schools, most tutorials, most things you're going to find online will just mention this stuff in passing. Oh, be weary of gimbal lock, be weary of things like 180 degree flipping. Um, you might even hear something about candy wrapping or... Um, you know, twists causing uh, flips or whatever. The point is, is I feel it's really necessary to understand and accept some of the limitations that all 3D and the medium in general will uh, pose to you. And understanding them um, as a concept from the very beginning, I think will pay dividends in the long run and you'll avoid a lot of heartache and figuring out why something is broken versus um, how to troubleshoot something. So what? Let me start. What is gimbal lock? Well, uh, off the off the bat here, I highly recommend watching this video by the CG Gorilla people. Uh, they do a really good job at explaining it in depth. Um, but for for the sake of argument here, I have set up a small little gimbal system uh, with the rings that you may. Be all familiar with if you uh, mess around in any 3d program and you might notice why these rings are all varying size and you notice uh, the way that I parented them this is actually how a 3d rotation system a Euler Euler whatever you want to call it in Cartesian coordinate system this is how it will work in every 3d program I, in most, I would say, unless um, they figured something I'm not aware of. But for the sake of um, clarity here, let me go ahead and explain what the heck is going on. In every single instance, no matter what you do, you will have to deal with the fact that gimbal rotations will always work under the hood. So, what is a gimbal lock? Well, um, as you can see, if I spin let's say the uh, x-axis rotation I spin it freely everything seems to be fine and I'll spin the uh, z-axis rotation and it seems to be moving all of these axes so now if I spin the x-axis rotation it's moving on a bias or an angle whatever you want to call it the same thing with um, the y rotation is moving on an angle as well that means from this precise location I cannot move on an angle. That means in order for me to do it, I would have to actually move the Z rotation back and then move the X rotation down. That's not necessarily a gimbal lock, but it is a gimbal problem. Now a lock would be, let's say, if I move the Y rotation all the way 90 degrees. Now the uh, X and Z are lined up. So in this position, I can't move perpendicular, I can't move any kind of degree angular. I can only rotate this, and in both directions I can only move this and this. That poses a bit of a problem because now, if I want to move in any other direction that is not uh, horizontal in this given circumstance, I literally have to move horizontal to unlock this guy. You may, you may be saying to yourself, okay, well, I never noticed that problem. And I'll show you right away that we have a simple cube, and what I'll do the same thing. I'll move this 90 degrees horizontal, and you can see here, um, I'll even set a key, and I'll set another key. And I can freely move it 90 degrees this way, disproving my theory that this is gimbal locked because I moved it there. There's no problem. But watch what happens when I scrub this animation. 
what on earth is happening? It's doing exactly what I said you'd have to do. Let me turn this actual component mode off on, on Gimbal and you'll see what I'm talking about. You can kind of see the, uh, the, the red, the X and the Z are actually locked together. If I slowly scrub this out, you can see what's going on. In order to do the move I requested, those two have to actually move together. And I'll even uh, go one step further and show you what the graph editor is trying to do. Let me go ahead and select these rotations. Look at the X that's being made. If you ever see a X or if you see two axes almost have the exact identical animation or the curves are almost like mirroring one another, you probably most 100% of the time have something called gimbal lock without even have to, having to analyze what's going on further. So what can we do to solve this problem? Because let's say this is a character's torso and we want to move um, 180 degrees one way or the other and you know move our body one way or the other. Let's say we wanted to do a flip and automatically this is lined up and locked. So it's a major limitation of um, 3D animation. Some people have devised putting a fourth rotation but that pose I'll go into why that actually can even lead into more problems um, but for the, for the sake of what we're doing now let's see if we can solve this problem with just a simple cube because if we can't solve it with a simple cube we're not going to solve it with a very complex bipedal character so let's take a look at the graph editor one of the solutions that a lot of people pose is selecting all the rotational curves and running something called an Euler filter a Euler filter whatever you want to call it about 50 percent of the time we'll see that something actually has happened but about 50% of the time, it doesn't solve the problem. It's good to try to run it regardless to see if it, it does anything. But what you'll see here is that the curves are still just about mirrored. And we have an X, but it's just, it's just been moved. And you can see that it's still not moving exactly the way we want it to. So... Let us, let us delete this animation, start from the beginning, and we'll see what we can do. Now, what were we trying to do? We were trying to turn this cube and then be able to turn this way. If we plan our animations in advance and we decide we can change the order of where these rings are parented to each other by something called a rotation order. Right now, it is on X, Y, Z. X being the smallest, Y being in the middle, Z being uh, the parent to all of them. Well, let's try a different one. Let's try, um, let's try uh, X, Y, Z. Why don't we just reverse it, see what happens. So now when I turn this guy, it seems that we're going to get gimbal at another location. So that doesn't seem to be the right one. So what about uh, Z, Y, X? or ZXY. Let's try ZXY and see what happens. Now when we turn this guy, it seems that we still have the ability to turn um, 90 degrees this way. So let's see if that's true. Let's turn 90 degrees that way and see if our animation has been fixed. It seems like it has. In fact, let's turn this back to where it was. That's a nice smooth motion. You see, by planning your animations ahead of time, you can actually avoid gimbal lock in the future. But sometimes it's not always um, that clear. Let's go into another example. A common place that you're always going to see gimbal lock is on a joint like the shoulder. In this uh, animation example, we have a character's arm just trying to do a nice, simple forward, up, and stretch rotation. You can see there's only a few keys here. 
and it doesn't seem to be very smooth. It's trying to be smooth, but it's not following the degrees of rotation that we really expect it to. Let's see what's going on with the gimbal. Okay, we have gimbal. And as we can see, as it's approaching certain positions, we can see that these two axes are actually very close to locking up until they actually pretty much are locked together. Because remember, as we said, when two axes are close, we have lost the degree to move pretty much in a completely different uh, free direction. We're actually, like a robot, we're actually locked completely. You just can't move that way until finally the freedom has been restored. So what do we do? Well, we already have an animation. So if you change uh, your rotation order after the fact, it's going to screw up all your animation, uh, guaranteed. Right now we have XYZ, which is the default gimbal, um, rotation order, sorry. But let's try to find one. Let's see what's happening, let's see what's going on. So as we, we can move down pretty freely, uh, we can actually rotate this way pretty freely. And, but if we move the arm this way in front of us, which is a pretty common rotational movement, we're already reaching gimbal. How often do we actually twist our arm like this? Not too often. So we can probably reorder this to free up the other two rotations a little bit more and kind of make that one the least priority. So let's see if ZXY does the trick. So let's go down. That looks okay. Let's move it this way. Oh, that looks okay. And now rotation this way on, this, on itself seems to be the one. So ZXY seems to be the one that we want. But unfortunately, uh, we can't do that with our given situation. So running a little script here, which I highly recommend you get a script called Set New Rotation Order for Maya. Um, you can set rotation order without actually damaging the keyframes that you set. So I'm going to go ahead and load this script up. I already have the rotation order I want, and I have the controller selected, and I hit this. It goes through the whole thing, sets the proper rotation order, and tries to preserve the animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play it default. It seems to be okay. It seems to be a little better. Uh, not too much. Uh, some things may get preserved, some things might get damaged. But the keyframes are the things that are important that we we want to uh, want to keep in mind. Let's see what's going on with these these keys. Well, we can see some things have been. Let's try to fix some of those overshoots since things have shifted around, and we can even try to run the oil filter afterwards, which doesn't do anything. Let's see if uh, things have been cleaned up a little bit. Now, even with this animation, I went ahead and change this graph editor a little bit. Not too much, I just cleaned up some keys. Um, I fixed some of the overshoots. So you could see if I, um, if I actually select the controller. Uh, the rotations are actually not really mirroring each other too much. These are almost sort of the opposite, but they seem different enough to not really seem like they would affect too much. So let's see what the actual animation looks like now. Much better. That actually seems more natural. There's still some little weirdness going on there, as you can see. I can pull the graph editor over. So if I go ahead and scrub this, you can probably uh, take one of these up just a little bit more or lag one behind, so, or maybe have one play out a little bit faster or slower. The point being is that you have a little bit more control over what's going on. So it seems a little bit better. And that's, that is gimbal lock in a nutshell and how to avoid it. Because if we take a look at the gimbal here, let's say the, uh, the character wants to turn just 90 degrees, you're already stuck. You can't, he can't move uh, left to right is his torso. He's stuck. 
so what good is that what if in the action you have to have the character turn around some people might say just to move the uh, placement node to animate that but that poses its own problems whereas you could just change the rotation order um, and just solve the problem from the get-go bam now I can do this anyway how far or unless you're flipping unless the character needs to flip too you're not really going to rely too much on this and you're still going to have this free rotation so just by actually leaving some of these as default you can avoid all these gimbal problems from the get-go so I hope that cleared up what gimbal lock is why it's a problem in animation um, I'll get into in maybe the next video why gimbal is can lead into other things with math we'll talk about the dreaded 180 degree flip that will be the next disconcerting thing that all 3d artists will probably face one time or another in their careers so i hope this helps you uh, please let me know if you want me to uh, discuss anything a little further or clarify anything i have mentioned in this video uh, good luck